This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Hey, welcome to Aloha Friday and Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii where community matters. And it's Friday the 13th. Not that I'm superstitious or anything, nothing could possibly go wrong today at all. Right? No, nothing's gonna go wrong today. Anyway, it's gonna be a little bit of a different show. I decided to take big risks today and actually shoot some video in our shop and show you some of the cool stuff that we have on hand um, because I don't know, you, you probably haven't really seen all the new stuff up close. I know we've talked about our light carts and our generators, but um, I've got all of it up close and personal. So without further ado, let's hit the first video. And we'll talk, talk about the Millennium Rain Unit that we have to dispense hydrogen to all of our gear. So this is HCAT's Millennium Rain Unit. I'll open everything up here so you can see it all. This is a hydrogen station on a pallet. Um, it retails for a little bit under $100,000. And it comes with two kilograms of hydrogen storage in the tanks there that you see. But we actually opted to purchase extra storage. So we have six extra tanks, giving us a total of eight kilograms of storage at 5,000 PSI. So as you can see, it's a pretty compact unit and it does everything that you need it to do. This is the main production side. At the bottom is a fuel cell, or excuse me, um, a cell stack that is the heart of the electrolysis process. Um, inside that stack, basically distilled water, deionized water mixed with a little bit of sodium hydroxide is um, always present along with some DC current uh, and when the DC current is applied it separates water into hydrogen and oxygen. So inside the main component here are up over here we have a, a, a logic unit that um, gives instructions to people when they want to dispense fuel. We have the two storage tanks. We have our electrical panel with all the logic behind it. We have the cell stack down below. We have a plumbing uh, manifold panel in here, and I'm not gonna open them up because it might be proprietary with, with uh, Millennium Rain. On the top, we have actual compressor unit and compressor controls, really small compressors. Over here are the, the water towers um, that actually cool the, uh, the water that goes into the electrolyzer because again, when you do electrolysis, just like when you do a fuel cell, you have three products. You, uh, when you're doing electrolysis, you have the oxygen, hydrogen gases being separated, and you have electricity going in, and you have heat coming, uh, being generated as well. When you put the hydrogen into a fuel cell, what you get is heat, electricity, and water as output. So here, we're breaking the water down into hydrogen, oxygen, and that's it. We're storing the hydrogen, and we're letting the oxygen go. So these two towers provide a cooling system for the um, cell stack, but also um, percolate the gases. You can see on the right is oxygen, on the left is uh, hydrogen. And what it'll do is as the pressure builds up, the hydrogen is compressed and stored in the tanks, and the oxygen pressure would just keep building up, correct? So every once in a while, the uh, logic in the system will vent the oxygen off into the air, and we help Mother Nature get more oxygen in the air. Um, when there is more water needed, it comes from back here, from inside our building, and it goes into the system. Uh, in the back here, we have the scrubber units to make sure that we get the purity. The, the, cells, the electrolyzer stack actually gives you virtually 99% pure hydrogen off the stack. <clears throat> but the two contaminants that may be in there are A, water, and B, a little bit of oxygen. You don't want oxygen, especially with your hydrogen, so even in small amounts. So what happens in this scrubber unit is any oxygen that happens to be present with hydrogen is run across a um, membrane that reacts to the oxygen and hydrogen together and turns it into water instantly and generates some heat. That water is then dropped out the bottom of the unit. And then the two larger cylinders here are actually um, desiccants. 
So these units dehumidify any of the hydrogen gas that's going into the compressors. It takes the rest of the water contamination out of it. So virtually by the time it finishes coming through these two scrubbers, the hydrogen is 99.999% pure and of a good enough standard to go in vehicles. Now coming back around this way, the last piece of the equipment that um, is pretty standard for anybody that does fueling is the refueling receptacle, receptacle J2601 standard. This one's built in Germany, but it's pretty standard. This is a low pressure. You'll notice that the low pressure has this kind of uh, nozzle on it. And the high pressure looks more like a regular uh, gasoline um, dispensing unit. So one of the things I like to, to show people is that um, we, you know, you hear the, when I'm demonstrating this thing, we have uh, folks that, that say, oh, well, hydrogen gas is, you know, doesn't have any odor. Um, if it's on fire, you can't see the flame, which is true in pure daylight. It's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty hard to see. <laughs> but I just turned on the refueling system, and I'm going to put a little bit of pressure into the hose here. I've got about 400 PSI in the system now. And this system is designed so that when you're finished refueling, instead of leaving all that pressure in the hose and causing stresses on the hose, you can actually vent it off. But the reason I do this is not to, is, is to actually demonstrate another concept which people forget about when they read on Wiki, uh, uh, Wikipedia that hydrogen is odorless, colorless, um, and the flame is invisible, and people think they're gonna walk into a room where there's a big hydrogen leak, and the, then they're gonna walk into an invisible flame and get burned to death. Well, listen to what a hydrogen leak sounds like. That's only a couple hundred PSI. This is 2,300 PSI. You're not going to walk into a hydrogen leak and not hear it. That was still only a fraction of what a leak in a vehicle would sound like, or a vehicle with an almost empty tank would sound like. But certainly, you're going to hear a hydrogen leak coming out of a pressurized cylinder. You're not going to walk into a, a flame or a burning, a burning uh, room that's full of hydrogen, because number one, the hydrogen immediately goes up in the air at 45 miles an hour, which is basically 60 feet per second or six stories in one second, you're not going to just have hydrogen hanging around waiting for a fire to start. Um, it has to be, if it's gonna catch on fire, like I said, we have here is pure, so it won't burn unless you have an oxidizer with it. But if it does, if you do have an oxidizer, you do mix your hydrogen with oxygen and it does happen to catch on fire at the right ratios, then what you'll have is a flame that goes straight up at 60 miles an hour, or 45 miles an hour, 60 feet per second. So, you know, I, I show this little demonstration here to say, you gotta use all your senses. You don't just count on your sense of sight or your sense of smell um, to, to let you know there's a leak. There's also your sense of hearing, you know, being able to, to get an auditory signal from uh, anything that's leaking. So this is our Millennium Rain. We do use it. We fill our, uh, our gem vehicle and our light carts and our generators with this one. And US Hybrid uses our hydrogen here sometimes to purge tanks and to check their equipment rather than going all the way out to Hickam and filling up a tank and bringing it back here. So this is Millennium Rain. Hey, so that was our Millennium Rain unit. And uh, what I'd like to add to that is, you know, I, I've been working with a lot more hydrogen, especially lately. We've actually got a couple cooking girls and I'll, I'll do some video with them uh, cooking some food and demonstrate that for you. But the more I use the hydrogen gas uh, in the more conventional role, like burning it to cook with, um, you start to notice the unique characteristics of the hydrogen um, flame and realize that if, if you ever had a hydrogen leak where it mingled with a lot of air and you had a, a mixture that was flammable, when it ignites, it's gonna ignite. I mean, it's, gonna, it's just gonna do a flash. If you have a stream of hydrogen coming out of a tank, it's going to be coming out in a, like a blowtorch. So you'd actually see more of a blowtorch type frame, flame. Um, so anyway, I, I've gotten more and more comfortable working with the hydrogen, but that's when you got to be more and more careful because that's when you don't want to get complacent.
So our next video is uh, a really cool project we did with, with a bunch of kids, um, converting a electric uh, off the road type vehicle, but it's actually a low speed vehicle. It's actually roadworthy. And this kind of vehicle can be purchased locally at, um, at any one of your dealers, but uh, we got ours from Montgomery Power Sports and uh, it's a gem, uh, Polaris gem electric vehicle. So roll tape. So this is our Polaris gem. It's a street legal vehicle, as you can tell by the license plate. It has 300 watts of solar panels on the roof, flexible solar panels. And it has a hydrogen fuel cell range extender on the back end of it. It's pretty simple. Like I say, it is street legal, it has a horn. It has windshield wipers and a windshield, has turn signals, has headlights. Really easy and fun to drive. This is not a typical golf cart. It's more like a, a quad that you have on your farm, except it is 100% electric drive. So what I wanted to do was show you a little bit about um, how simple this fuel cell is to work. So I'm gonna come up here. I'm gonna turn on the hydrogen open the tank up so there's some hydrogen flowing. I've got a regulator set up. I just hit the start button, the system counts down, and gives you a chance to check the, to program it the way you want, and then it starts the system up. Doesn't make a whole lot of noise. The system is starting, and what it's gonna do is it's gonna check the voltage on the batteries, and I've got it set to charge at about 52 volts. So once the system does goes through its self-check, It'll start looking at the batteries and check the state of their charge. The batteries are actually pretty full, but it still should charge a little bit. And the system will kick in and start charging uh, and give me the amperage and the voltage as the fuel cell starts to send out, um, send out electricity. As you can see, the gauge will build up pressure as the hydrogen goes from the tank into their small regulator and then you'll hear occasional discharge when the fuel cell discharges. So right now we're set up, um, the batteries have 50.6 volts on it. Oh. And then it was doing this yesterday too. It's, uh, it's checking itself. It said, uh, hey, there's a mid failure. I think it's because I'm letting the pressure drop on the tank. I have the, the um, regulator set so low. But it's uh, charging the batteries at 6.6 .6 amps and I have 50.9 volts. See, the pressure is dropping to zero on this thing. I might just open it up a little bit and keep the pressure higher and it should be okay now. So it's hanging around seven amps and 51 volts charging away. So ideally what we would do is we would just drive with it in this mode and it'll keep charging the batteries while we're driving. And then when I park it, I just leave it on. And while it's parked, the fuel cell continues to charge the batteries, as does the PV array. So this is really a neat, neat little vehicle. I'll move the camera up high. So you can see it's a flexible PV array. It's a flex panel, so they actually bounce around and it doesn't bother them any. They can still function. And um, it's a really cool little vehicle. It gets uh, some great mileage. We can go about 100, 100 140 miles uh, with this thing um, when it charges up with the fuel cell. It just keeps on going. And the photovoltaics, if I, we leave it out in the sun, it takes a while to charge everything up, but it charges up. So it's a nice little vehicle. We did this project with four students from Center for Tomorrow's Leaders, and um, they're actually gonna come out here and, and drive this thing. So again, the bottom is the fuel cell, and this is the control unit. And I'm gonna move the gem, and we'll go inside and we'll look at some of our other equipment. Hey, so that's our gem. We really like it. It's actually a lot of fun to drive around. I like riding my bike too, but the gem is a lot better when you gotta haul cargo. So anyway, the, the building that thing was a lot of fun. Driving it's a lot of fun. I'm thinking when I retire, I'm going to have one in Kailua and replace one of my cars with it because it can go anywhere where there's a 35 mile an hour speed limit. You can drive it on the streets, it gets safety checked, it gets registered like a regular car. And um, we'll probably try to drive it through some of the Christmas parades this, uh, this Christmas season or holiday season and get, get it out there in the public. So we're going to take a quick break now and we'll be right back with the rest of the tour of our shop. My friend, mother, what big eyes you have, she said. All the better to see you with, my dear. That's the wolf. 
What are you doing? Okay, cool. Research says reading from birth accelerates the baby's brain development. And you're doing that now? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. this is the starting line. Push. Uh, when this is over, you're dead. Read aloud 15 minutes. Every child, every parent, every day. Hello, I'm Helen Dora Hyden, the host of Voice of the Veteran, seen here live every Thursday afternoon at 1 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. As a fellow veteran and veterans advocate with over 23 years experience serving veterans, active duty, and family members, I hope to educate everyone on benefits and accessibility services by inviting professionals in the field to appear on the show. In addition, I hope to plan on inviting guest veterans to talk about their concerns and possibly offer solutions. As we navigate and work together through issues, we can all benefit. Please join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. for the Voice of the Veteran. Aloha. Hey, welcome back to my lunch hour. Stan, the energy man here on a tour of our shop, one of the most exciting places in the state of Hawaii, I'm telling you. Hey, it must be Friday the 13th. Look at those GMO trees behind me. They're really big in Waikiki now. There must be something going on. Anyway, back inside our shop, we have uh, some more great stuff in there. We bought two different models of equipment from a company called Lux for GTM. They uh, generally used to specialize in making high pressure fuel tanks for the hydrogen, but they've branched out into actually making uh, commercial off the shelf equipment that can be used uh, mostly in the industrial world, um, doing construction site things and emergency lighting and emergency power. So we got two of their pieces of equipment and we've got some videos showing you how they work. First off is a five kilowatt generator, roll tape. So here we have two of our generators. These generators are made by Lux for GTM. They're five kilowatts. They have four 115 volt um, outlets that are rated at 15 amps each. So this generator with all of its storage can go out in the field and probably run, you know, some stuff that's drawing four, five, six amps, probably a day or two without being refilled. So this side, uh, I have the doors open, shows uh, six tanks. They're fairly large tanks, I would say. Um, well, they, they store at 5,000 PSI, and they look like they're about two to two and a half kilogram tanks. I don't remember the exact specifications on it. And then down the center line, you see the um, inverter on the rack. And there's actually a battery down underneath the uh, plate there. When we come around to this side, you see the, the controls for the tanks, the plumbing. And then in the center, you see the control unit on the top and the fuel cell stack on the bottom. And again, just like the, um, just like the gem vehicle, extremely quiet. You basically open up all the valves. Uh, you start the fuel cell running and then you connect the uh, inverter. Once you got the fuel cell stabilized and running, you connect the inverter and it gives you nice clean signal on your, on your power and it also gives you very quiet power. So we're hoping that the TV industry folks and the movie industry folks will get to look at this and, uh, and really enjoy it um, for the, all the qualities uh, it has in terms of clean power and quiet. Um, the only thing I would, that I've found that I'm probably not particularly fond of with this is it is fairly heavy. Um, I wouldn't necessarily take it as an, like an all-terrain thing um, where you could just kind of drive it anywhere. It's, uh, we, we put some door, uh, dunnage down uh, when, before we deploy the outriggers because one of the most important things you do with all of this kind of equipment is you have to stabilize it, make sure it's fairly level just so that uh, A, everything works. Although. These fuel cells can work at, at angles other than perfectly level, but it's better to have them perfectly level, and that's our goal. I also am not particularly fond of the two and five, uh, five sixteenths um, towing ball that they selected, but um, or towing hitch that they selected but uh, that's a personal choice. Also, the outrigger legs are a little bit long, so they're pretty much where they need to be when the thing needs to be leveled and the problem there is when you start to have um, uh, uneven terrain or you have to go over curbs and things and you're you're trying to maneuver a truck 
Um, with a real short wheelbase like this, these things are really hard to maneuver. And with real uneven terrain, you can't swing the legs down very easily. So that's some of the changes I would make if I was uh, gonna manufacture these. So it comes with a spare tire. And uh, again, just like other, other vehicles, that's how you fill it. You open up the valve, you pull off the, the dust cover, connect to the Millennium Rain station or our station at Hickam, and fill it up. And that tells you how much pressure you have on your tanks. And you can select the tanks, you can open all the tanks at once, you can cascade them, you can do however you like. So it's got a lot of options on it. And that's your Zero Set Lux for GTM 5 kilowatt generator. I like this kind of format. I'm just sitting here in the studio doing nothing but watching videos, so this is easy. I'm going to do this more often. Anyway, um, those uh, generators, um, they're pretty slick. I, I think they're going to work out well. I, I made a couple of critiques on, uh, on the actual structures of the, the trailers. Um, but I'm telling you, driving something, driving a trailer that short I, it was a big learning curve for me. I, I have a boat that's 30 feet long and I can drive that trailer pretty easy, but backing up these little short things, man, you gotta be on top of it. Those short trailers are tough to maneuver. So um, the last piece of equipment that I wanna show you before we talk about fuel cells is um, our light carts. And to me, these things are awesome. They perform so well and they're so great. And, and even the trailers design nicely. So let's uh, roll tape it and I'll show you the light carts. So what I'd like to show you now is actually my favorite piece of equipment. So um, I'm going to actually start it up for you and show you how it works. This is uh, also a Luxford GTM product. This is called Zero Set, also um, part of their series. And this is our portable light cart. And we used it a couple weeks ago at a Eat the Streets event here in Honolulu. And this, these two light carts uh, provided all of the light to light up an area about three-fourths the size of a football field for two nights straight, uh, averaging four to five hours a night with zero problems and really good light. And the funny thing was we had people putting their beer and their food on top of these things like it was a table and not even thinking about the fact that if it was a generator, they'd be having a bunch of smelly diesel fumes and, uh, and a lot of heat and a lot of vibration and not be able to come near the thing. But they were using this thing for like a picnic table because it was so quiet and so clean. I also really like this little cart here. I bought that uh, to help move these, uh, these pieces of equipment around. They really come in handy rather than trying to maneuver this. With a short wheelbase, these uh, vehicles are really tough to maneuver. But let me show you how simple this is to operate. This is the system. So what we do is we turn the master switch to on and open up the hydrogen. This is also where you fuel the hydrogen, right there. And then we start up the system itself. It warms up for a few seconds. You can hear it running. And then I want to show you too that the mast actually goes up, and I have it up now, I'm gonna bring it down. And it actually goes up quite a bit, and uh, that's one of the main reasons you have to level it really well is when it's, uh, when it's running and it's out in the weather and the wind, you want the, the, the um, base to be nice and stable and level with the uh, outriggers out so that it doesn't tip over. But when you want to turn on the lights, just push a button, the lights come on. You can see it produces quite a bit of light. And um, the people were really happy that we had this out there. It was just amazing. So also notice that it has uh, places for the forklift to lift it up or a single point. It's already balanced uh, on the center so that you got it balanced out. If you need to charge the batteries up, you can actually charge the batteries in this unit um, to make sure you have a good, uh, good, a little bit of battery uh, charging available. Uh, and again, this is an electric system, so the fuel cell charges batteries, batteries run the lights. These are very efficient LED lights, um, and they're, they're really just pretty much uh, maintenance free. Yeah, if you want to call GTM Lux for a go online, there you go. There's their uh, contact information. Great piece of equipment. Love it to death. Um, it's real simple. It's real reliable. It's um, the instructions that come with it are super basic, and uh, we've driven this thing on roadways and 
all kind of places and you can hear the fuel cell kicking in now and you hear the how noisy it gets when it really ramps up the decibels you know you, there you go that's that's as noisy as it gets so when I close the door you can't even hardly hear that people are standing around you know eating their dinner and having beers uh, with their stuff resting on top here and they thought it was pretty slick so anyway this is what it looks like up close and we'll step back a little bit and show you how bright the lights can be. We've got two of the lights facing forward and two of them facing backwards. And here's our two light carts together. And uh, love them. They're really great, great piece of equipment. One thing I'm really proud of is serial number 001 and serial number 002. These are the first two on the planet and uh, they've been working exceptionally well. So. That's our GTM, our Luxford GTM uh, light carts. I'm gonna leave this one running because we're supposed to run it for a few minutes every day. And then I'm gonna take you over and show you some of the uh, other equipment that we have in the shop. So that was our light cart. I really like those things. They're really slick. And, and they did get a lot of attention at the, at the Eat the Street event, the Oktoberfest we had at Kakaka Waterfront Park. Literally, when I went into the middle of the beer garden there, there were people having their dinner on top of that light cart and not even thinking about how quiet it was and, and how um, just how, how environmentally friendly it was to be sitting there using it like a picnic table. Um, and it was actually generating all the light for half of the event and the other light cart was generating the light for the other half of the event. And that's all it took. The second night, only our two light carts were out there. The first night, they had a diesel set for backup and the second night, they didn't even use it. Just our two light carts and it did a great job. The last uh, video is a, a little clip that I, I just wanted to show people what uh, a fuel cell look like that goes in our vehicles. And, and really the emphasis here is on the size and the weight. So we can roll tape three or tape five. But I wanted to make a point that most people wouldn't relate to until you take a piece of equipment and, and look at it. This is a 30 kilowatt fuel cell made by Hydrogenics. You can tell by the, the, the logo and everything on top. It's their HYPM HD30, 30 kilowatts. So 30,000 watts of power come out of this unit, 30,000 watts. Now your typical house probably doesn't need more than 3,000 watts um, to run most things and your, your typical house probably does 20 to 30 kilowatt hours a day. So this equipment right here could produce enough power, certainly to run your house, probably to run a small building, probably to run several houses. Um, but it's the size of like an electric typewriter. But you can get an idea just from the two buses that come off the back that these are not whoop, wissy little, um, connections. There's a lot of power coming out of this thing and the power is generated by hydrogen and oxygen combining to make water and giving you two byproducts, electricity and heat. So it gives you electricity on that side and on this side are cooling um, inlets and outlets for cooling that um, are run by uh, electric pumps and electric fans that keep all the electronics cool. But I just wanted to, to, to be really clear, this piece of equipment gives you an awful lot of power co compared to a V8 engine or um, you know something uh, on the line of a diesel engine or a whole lot of batteries. This is 30 kilowatts of power. Um, so you combine this with a couple of the hydrogen tanks that, that we showed you on the, gener on the uh, generator sets, the portable gen sets when I had the doors open and you look at how much weight you can save instead of having big heavy batteries in your vehicle. You have this and a couple small batteries and a couple lightweight tanks and you're off and running. And so I tell people that when it comes to transportation, the reason hydrogen makes more sense than batteries for one reason is because that it's lighter. The equipment overall is lighter. And in most transportation scenarios, you want to reduce weight, especially in aircraft and especially in vehicle vehicles. That's why Ford went with aluminum bodies on their F-150s. Um, it wasn't to make them cool, it was to make them light so that they could get better mileage to meet the new federal standards. 
well, this is why Toyota and Honda and Hyundai and GM and Ford and Mercedes and BMW are all starting to transition to hydrogen fuel cells because they know that the federal um, fuel emission standards are going to get so strict in the near future that they're going to be driven to technologies that don't pollute and batteries are great. There's, a, there's room, plenty of room for batteries on our vehicles with our hydrogen fuel cells. We've got to have them. But the way you generate most of your power, right here with a good fuel cell. So that's a tour of HCAT we did this morning. And um, hey, Friday the 13th and nothing broke in the shop. I'm, I'm really impressed. Anyway, that brings us to the end of Stand the Energy Man. Next week, it'll be Rachel James and Ryan Wubbins to give you the low down and dirty on microgrids and how to make things all work in your locality. So until next week, aloha.